Game begin. Game over. Welcome back to this week's episode of Tech and Toys. We are a little bit late, but we are bringing out the Raspberry Pis in celebration of one, Pi Day, but two, the 10th anniversary of Raspberry Pi. So we've got a couple fun toys. We ran a micro center about an hour ago, picked up some extra stuff to go with this wonderful feast of pie we've got. And yogurt for the feast. Exactly. Yeah, classic. We always need yogurt. <laughs> so here in just a second, we're gonna dig into the fun world of Raspberry Pi and everything you can do with them from using it as a small PC to a streaming device if you want to plug it into a TV. Or a waifu simulator. Or a waifu simulator. So let's dig in. I guess kind of one of the cool things I wanted to actually talk about is I come from the 3D printing world where everything's based off of Arduino boards. And I actually personally was interested what's the difference between an Arduino and something like a Raspberry Pi. And it comes down to one is a microprocessor here versus a microcontroller. So if you're just getting into the DIY space or learning how to spell words for the first time, the microcontroller with a Arduino, it's gonna be a lot better if you're building simple robots and things that are controlling literally motors. Versus this, as Jack talked about, you can actually build what are really fun doing like smart mirrors, waifu simulators, <laughs> uh, cameras that aren't controlled by centralized companies, which I think is actually super cool. Like if you want security, Half the time, somebody actually controls those cameras versus something like this, you can program it yourself. And let me go grab my tinfoil hat real quick. I'll be right back. Wait, that doesn't come in the kit? <laughs> Maybe with the Pi 5. Maybe with the Pi 5, but yeah. But these are super fun little toys. Like uh, Arduino, for example, you have to connect it to a computer. Then you go ahead and put the code on it versus this, you can actually put an OS on it. And the Raspberry Pi 400, the nice thing with it is is a keyboard, all in one kit, you have a fun little guide in it, which I actually like, and they actually geared this a little bit more towards children, so it's perfect for me. That's new to coding and things like that. Mm -hmm. But this is a standalone unit, so this is the computer. I can actually put on, he likes Kali Linux, I don't know why. I'm more of an Ubuntu kind of gal, but all in one, I mean, you can't really beat it. It's kind of the revolution that all the DIY people wanted, and we've had it for 10 years, and this really should kind of be the norm for everybody at this point. I use my Raspberry Pi for general IT stuff is the easiest way to put it between um, either server management or logging into virtual servers that I manage. Can also load pretty much whatever operating system on them that you want to use. Uh, if you got a Raspberry Pi or want to get into the world of Raspberry Pi, there's a lot of options you have. The Easiest one to get right now is going to be like one of the Canna kits that we've got right here for the Raspberry Pi 4. But if you're looking for a more budget friendly option, you can get the Raspberry Pi 2 starting at about 30 to $40 uh, USD. If you can find them right now. <laughs> if you can find them. Because a lot of people are starting to catch on to the little bit of hype that there is around them with how much you can do. A uh, good example would be if you want to start a small little smart home setup, you can get a little module like we've got right here, but dedicated towards temperature, light, uh, humidity, and a couple different environmental sensors. You can get one of these for 30, 40 bucks at Micro Center or wherever you get your Raspberry Pi accessories no, from. No, Raspberry Pi is like you and they wear lots of hats. Yes. It looks like we have hats, and that's what these oh. little accessories are called. So you have the board itself, or you can grab little hats for additional sensors. So they're truly module devices, which makes them super awesome. And as that Jack was talking about, people are starting to figure that out, that it's not just this little tinker toy. It's honestly whatever you want it to be, which is fabulous. Yeah, whether you want to use it for mm. server administration or your first kind of do-it-yourself computer. Can you make an ass? An ass? NAS. NAS. <laughs> no, you can make a NAS or network area storage. Sure, I don't sure. Know. You can set these up to bridge storage devices together and have one central hub of management for, the, in our example, uh, what do we have? 40 terabytes of storage for our server. If we wanted to, we could theoretically connect all of those hard drives with enough power 
to a Raspberry Pi and manage it all that way. And you can utilize something called Plex, which is a media server, not only just for accessing the data that is on those drives, but you can also access streaming services as well. Can you watch anime? Of course you can I'm watch in. anime. All right. Let's do it. What are we even doing here? I don't even know. Well, should we break into these a little bit and kind of uh, see what they yeah, are? Yeah, I mean, I've been waiting for the past two hours to actually get into this stuff. You need some Pi 400s? Ooh. Mmm. But look at that little keyboard. So clean. Best part. Here, hold on. Let's time jack. Find the power button. What the fuck? Oh, power button. Yeah, function power. There we go, cool. F10 for those at home. But yeah, the nice thing with this, you get the keyboard, you get the official Raspberry Pi power source. Ooh. Mm. How many volts? I care, actually I don't right now. The mouse, the super sweet little SD card adapter. There's the SD card in there. And this actually comes uh, preloaded with the Pi OS, which is super awesome for kids. Really basic stuff, but I went ahead and actually put Ubuntu on one of these. And a nice little Raspberry Pi guide. Ooh. Which this is actually really fun because I'm trying to remember the, this was the software we were talking about where if you're trying to get into coding, they actually have, it's literally a plug and play where you take your if then statements or anything else and actually stack them. So it's kind of a little bit more of a visual way to learn how to interact with some of these codes. Today, I ended up grabbing a e-ink screen similar to the one you would see on like a Nook or a Kindle. Um, I grabbed a little 17 by seven LED screen of sorts where you can create a scrolling display. Uh, if you wanna have like a price ticker or track social media followers, something like that, you can program onto this. Um, and then I also grabbed a nice little case for my personal Raspberry Pi, but... He promised to get me the Nintendo one, but no. The NES one was so cool, but I did... It wasn't cool enough for you to get Hold, on, hold no, on. There's no I hold did on. see... I, no. I, boy? <laughs> I saw a full SNES kit uh, on Amazon for like 40 bucks or something. So if you wanted to build essentially your own little console, load some... ROMs on there and play games, or maybe you learn how to develop games yourself, the options are there. These devices are made for people that are curious, and they give you more than enough to constantly stay curious about, what if I did this? What if I added this module in? What if I wanted to create this little ecosystem for my home that tells me everything I need to do for the day, what the weather's gonna be like, like you would get from a Google Home, but for a fraction of the price. And Google's not gonna listen in on you. Now, something I, I did want to bring up is, I was at Micro Center last night, could not find any Raspberry Pi 4s. The only other place I've seen where they're reasonably priced right now, because I guess people are doing certain things, mining, let's not talk about that. But uh, it looks like Pi Shop, P-I Shop.us, and then you said Canakit Yeah, Canakit.com. Pi Shop, I don't know what they offer, but Canakit offers whole kits. So everything from the Raspberry Pi, your on-off switch, the SD card, the case. Um, you also get, because you'll need it, the power adapter and a HDMI cable to hook it up to display. All that came in the kit, and I think it, the kit was a total of about $180 or so. Okay. Yeah, because uh, so, these are sitting at a hundred and have pretty much the same thing. Yeah, well, so we're a hundred. Yeah, we're a hundred. <laughs> They're a little more expensive now just because of part availability. Yep. But to get started, I mean, getting a Raspberry Pi board standalone. You, if you can find them, you can get them starting at about thirty to thirty-five dollars. So and there's a few vi different versions. It's what a four, a two, and eight gigabyte. Yes, yeah, you have the two, four, and eight gigabyte for the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, you also have the Raspberry Pi 3 A and B model. They, they kind of pulled an iPhone with the models where there's basically 15 different ones, but for good reason, because not every single Raspberry Pi is gonna check the box that you need checked. Yep. They cater to the makers, they cater to the people that want to learn how to build or are just curious. So with their catering? Can I get a sandwich or no? They already brought you yogurt. Oh, yeah. Speaking of accessories, are you able to pop one of those out of the case and see how this half yeah. fits on here? It's an accelerometer. 
a gyroscope, not gyro, we're not New York, and a magne magnetometer, something like that. Air pressure sensor, temperature and humidity sensor, and a small joystick. So that gives you a lot of different capabilities. So I personally wanted to make a fart machine so you could have a temperature sensor so when somebody walked in through a certain doorway, similar to a thermal sensor, uh, you'd be able to pick up the temperature changes and then fire off uh, said methane mimicking device, if you will. But yeah, so it's a 40 pin GPIO. It's how you connect different modules. You can also get bridges to add three, four, five, six different modules on rather than using the one static one. And you just sandwich them together. Long pin goes in long hole. Short pin does not exist. Got it. So we'll start with the Pi 400 and the Pi OS. Like I said, it's limited. You'll be able to do some things on there. You'll be able to surf the interwebs. And I'm actually interested in checking out, like I said, the rudimentary coding programs, but for the most part, unless you're a child or have the IQ of a child, you'll probably want to go ahead and put it on Kali Linux or something like Ubuntu. Power that boy on. Oh, and it's booting. And here we are with Raspberry Pi OS. That's actually booted shockingly fast. Once we get set up and signed in because we've already pre-inst or preset this one up because it's BJ's personal Raspberry Pi. Uh, you get into Pi OS and you're presented with a similar interface to Mac OS or Windows because they want to keep it easy and friendly for people coming into the ecosystem. So out of the gates, you are presented with a programming tab, an internet tab with Chromium, you have sound and video, which by default uses VLC Media Player, which supports a plethora of different formats. And finding waifu videos. And finding waifu videos. Now, if we wanted to switch over to Ubuntu, is that hard? Um, all you have to do is shut this guy down and swap out the SD card. Are we going to so, do that? Yes. Yes, we are. All you would want to do before switching the operating system over is you want to shut down the device. By pulling out the power. That's definitely the correct way. That's there not we go. the correct way. No, don't pull out the power. You're gonna have a bad time. All you have to do, press in, pull it out. Then you just click that one back in with the operating system of your choice on there. So rather than having to swap out hard drives, it's just an SD card. Plug everything back in and hit the power. And now we just give it a second to boot. And then we see this friendly BJ screen. And he has a password. What's your password, BJ? Seven. You wanna you wanna say it for the whole interwebs? Yeah. Jar Jar Binks killed Star Wars. So once we get in and signed in, out of the box we have Firefox, Thunderbird Mail, you have your file explorer, Rhythm Box, which is a media player. Similar to Mac OS, you have the applications folder where you are presented with the rest of the tools on Ubuntu. You are also able to get a lot better information out of the box. Also, if you're throwing on the sense hats here, this actually has a joystick here in the lower corner, and you do need to put some kind of spacers in there. For example, since you have your bridge connector on the back, that is going to bend. So whenever you're getting these, I'm not sure if those were in the box, but definitely make sure to not leave that gap there. This is a little bit more of a primer, so we're kind of playing around with the ecosystem and seeing what we can do. That was the other thing I wanted to bring up is down in the comments that there are specific things you want us to kind of try to make with these. I know a lot of people have ended up doing the smart mirrors, which seem pretty cool. But if there's any wild ideas you guys have, definitely uh, put them down below. So while we wait for that to fully power down, I do want to break open this. So this is the Pimeroni Inky What? That sounds delicious. <laughs> mm. Ooh. This actually runs off of the Inky What in Inky Fat library, which is a, yeah. Um, it's a Python library that essentially runs all of their e-paper displays as well as some of their other accessories. So the Inky What actually has a brother called the Inky Fat. So they have a little digital ink ecosystem from Pimeroni, which, Good name. So to install these it, and get them running, first you have to install Python on your Raspberry Pi. Generally, they'll pre-install Python with the operating system. 
Um, and then you just have to go to their website and find the installation instructions through GitHub, which is my best friend. It's a little bit trickier to get these set up. So first you have to enable a couple options to allow the Raspberry Pi to actually interface with the display itself. And then you have to set up a small Python script, which you can fetch plenty of Python scripts on GitHub, whether you want a weather display or something like price tickers. You could set a Python script to draw something onto this inky display and then you'll be able to image whatever you want on here, whether it's like a name tag, a waifu face for BJ, as I roll my eyes 50 times. Mm. So we ended up not getting around to it, but we do also have a couple different cases for the Raspberry Pi. Another big thing is the customization with the Raspberry Pi. This has primarily been a primer to kind of look into the ecosystem. We grabbed some random parts. We were hoping to actually be able to get some other things, but Micro Center and everyone sold out. But like we said before, down in the comments, if there's certain things you guys do want to see, go ahead and bring that up because this is going to kind of hopefully become a series. We're going to do other things, but we're going to play with these a lot, hopefully. Thank you guys again for tuning in to Tech and Toys for this late Pi Day episode. Yay! Yay. We're going to go eat some cookies, and we will catch you guys next week. We're going to be doing a speed build with the Corsairs and everything else, getting our gaming computers set up. Now, let it be known, on the original build, I won. He did. Maybe. He did. Maybe. But Jack's got some practice, and so you'll definitely want to tune in. This will, this will be a fun one. We're going to have to set some stipulations about like cleanliness of build or something like that. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next week as we race to build a PC.